It was shortly after Pearl Harbor in April 1942 that a radio signal would beam across the isthmus on a regular basis on a military bandwidth. Then called PECAN after Panama Coast Artillery Command, which primary listeners were camped in remote jungle locations around the canal zone. They were able to hear music, sports, military, and other information. PECAN originally was located somewhere in Fort Clayton, although there is no record of its exact location or who staffed the station. PECAN and another radio station in Alaska signed on barely a month before the official birth of Armed Forces Radio Service on May 26, 1942. PECAN fell in line with the new service, renamed Armed Forces Radio Service, or AFRS. The station was relocated to Albrook Field Canal Zone in September 1944 to a building designed originally as a residence for the Commanding General of the Caribbean Defense Command. I'm Cliff Van Dorn. I reported to the station in November 1946 as an Army private, fresh from basic training. I guess you could call me the granddaddy of this group, because no one who served at AFRS before me has been located. In late 2003, I visited the producers of this show to talk about my days with Armed Forces Radio Service. It was absolutely the, the, the best duty in the world. Yeah. And I always look upon it now saying, how did I ever have an opportunity to fall into a situation like this? I mean, I could just as easily have gone to a signal battalion or something else. I have enough personnel, but like you folks were so involved with live productions and the TV and stuff, well, our stuff was so canned. It was uh, regimented. I mean, we didn't deviate from the program schedules or anything like that, unless we had some sort of an emergency. And uh, so we didn't have the demanding hours and everything that you folks did. And like I said, we didn't have the, we didn't have any designated, the chief announcer was our chief NCO, would say. We didn't have anybody above us, any first sergeants or anything like that. We had just the one commanding officer at any given time. Wartime resumes of COs at AFRS produced a strange mix, according to Cliff. Started out with our Air Force B-17 pilot, who, like I said, had many skills. He, broad he would broadcast. Our second officer was an infantryman and a fine individual, a captain, and he would broadcast. He was the one responsible for really starting these remote broadcasts I spoke about to give a little dimension to the station. Then we had a third man that I think he was Coast Artillery at the time. He had no special skills and he might have been from the pool where maybe. And then our fourth one that I left, he had had broadcasting skills because he used a, a name on the air. He had shortened his name in 49 and that, that was the beginning of television essentially in 49 and 50 yeah. when the neighbors would get together. One neighbor had a television set, and they invite everybody over from Moulton Borough, and that was, you know, and uh, after I left the radio station, I wondered through the years whatever happened to the personnel whom I had known there. I didn't realize the continuity until I was fortunate enough to get on the chat room. Cliff lost touch with the AFRS crew over the years when he went back to civilian life and entered a career in public affairs for a telephone company. But it all came flooding back when he discovered the SCN website. these years, my friends, military friends, would have reunions with their 3rd Infantry Division and so on and so forth. And I would say to myself, gee, there's no, there's no organization for the radio, Armed Forces Radio and so on, until working along like this and now having found you folks, I realize what a unique group we are.